हेलो लर्नर्स टूडे वी आर गोइंग टू डिस्कस अबाउट एच आई एड्स काउंसिलिंग टू अंडरस्टैंड एच आई वी लेटेस्ट सी अ केस ऑफ मिस्टर आर हु इज एन ऑटो रिक्शा ड्राइवर ही वॉज फ्रिक्वेंटली फॉलोइंग सिक फाइनली डिसाइडेड टू गेट हिज ब्लड टेस्टेड फॉर एच आई वी एड्स मिस्टर आर वॉज टेस्टेड पॉजिटिव फॉर एच आई वी डॉक्टर इन्फॉर्म्ड हिम एंड हिज वाइफ अबाउट हिज पॉजिटिव टेस्ट रिजल्ट she was shocked and angry due to the betrayal and was very worried of herself having the disease when they returned home his wife disclosed his hiv status to family members he felt very offended with the episode and headed straight to the liquor shop and got intoxicated under the influence of alcohol he abused wife he started consuming alcohol on a regular basis due to which increased the economic burden on his head he finally sold his rickshaw and left with no other means to support his family he stopped all interactions with his family community and society at large now his children no longer go to school and his wife somehow manages to earn bread and butter for the family while working as a man majority of her savings are consumed by repeated hospitalizations and ill health of her husband so hiv aids is a debilitating disease which is associated with many opportunistic infections responsible for adverse and psychosocial impacts seen in sufferer and his family as it is evident from the case study of mr r in our society HIV disease is invariably linked to premarital and extramarital sex high rates of HIV are observed in men having sex with men as well as intravenous drug users both these practices are considered as abnormal or deviant by almost all societies and religions as the community associated HIV with such disapproved immoral behaviors the individuals with HIV AIDS are labeled as immoral by the society and lose their social status currently there are about 2.1 million people in india who are struggling with HIV AIDS as per a recent survey report the overall prevalence of aids is declining in our country due to the continuous effort of many government and non governmental organizations like naco however a steep rise in prevalence of aids was seen in some of the states hiv the full form is human immunodeficiency virus is a retrovirus that infects cd4 cells T lymphocytes in our body these cells are responsible for activating our immune systems once hiv enters into the system it targets cd4 cells and starts killing them this results in decreased immunity level which further opens a window for other types of infections called opportunistic infections like tuberculosis and pneumonia and is known as aids acquired immunodeficiency syndrome some common factors responsible for the contraction of hiv the first one is unprotected sex the second one is maintaining sexual contact with multiple partners or polygamy third one is injectable drug use using needles or injectable drugs like smeg or sharing needles transmission of virus from infected mothers to child during pregnancy or during breastfeeding etc let us see the common psychological problems seen in hiv aids patients mood disorders are very common substance use disorders are also seen anxiety disorders suicidal ideation and in some of the cases neuropsychological impairment has also been seen these psychological comorbidities are also responsible for low self esteem increased risk taking behaviors which in turn 
affects the psychological functioning of an individual who is suffering from HIV AIDS. An overall reduction in the quality of intimate relationship is often seen in the patients of HIV AIDS which makes them emotionally fatigued and thereby leaves them in a vulnerable states. The main goal of HIV AIDS counselling is to improve psychosocial functioning. In HIV AIDS counselling, the entire focus is laid on betterment of the psychosocial functioning of clients by reducing their agony, pain and suffering. To reduce the impact of social stigma, due to marginalization, clients face stigma and loneliness may develop suicidal tendencies and guilt. Therefore, psychotherapy or counseling intends to reduce effects of social stigma and marginalization on individuals suffering from HIV AIDS. To reduce frequency of dropouts to the therapy regime, non-adherence to medical treatment and frequency dropouts from the counseling sessions is quite common in such clients. Counseling aims towards decreasing the dropout rates and rebuilding self-esteem in clients. So sometimes the goal is also there to maintain the continuous medical treatment in the client. Reduction in chances of further transmission of the infection. One of the goal of counseling is the prevention of transmission of the disease as in pre-test counseling and providing a support to the sufferer in the post-test counseling for reducing the likelihood of any psychological comorbidity. Let us see the counseling strategies in HIV AIDS. People living with HIV AIDS have to face a lot of uncertainties pertaining to their social status, health and well-being, issues pertaining to families, jobs, etc. The uncertainties arise mainly due to the perceived stigma and anxiety that an individual with HIV faces. Thus, it is a mandate to provide HIV counselling at the time of its diagnosis in order to best deal with the psychosocial issues of the person. Counseling for HIV AIDS can be done on an individual basis and or along with their partners or families. The motto of counseling in this stage is prevention of any further chances of infection, providing an effective care to the client and helping him to develop better coping strategies to deal effectively with the barriers causing hurdles in the treatment. Some common approaches to counseling in HIV AIDS. Modern day counseling techniques for the treatment of HIV AIDS are based on the principles of class classical concepts like psychodynamic, behavioral, family and humanistic approach. Let us see these approaches one by one. First, we are seeing psychodynamic therapies. So, in psychodynamic approach is primarily based on the resolution of emotional conflicts and target the reduction of defense mechanisms, especially denial about the illness in the client in post-assessment stages. The main task of the counselor is to help client to recognize their perception and defenses and help them to become emotionally stable and psychosocially functional. This therapy also helps the client to build better insight about themselves and their psychological states. Another approach is humanistic approach. The underlying philosophical roots of humanistic and existential approach are based on the notion of finding a purpose of the life and giving it a literal meaning. This approach aims to help client to live his life to the fullest even in the presence of the disease. 
counselor helps to let the client express hidden fears related to the disease and its future outcomes now let us see the behavioral approach behavioral approach is used for helping the client in gaining control over his behavior it focuses on overt as well as covert behaviors these behaviors are the direct result of maladaptive behaviors that a client has developed in response to the illness for reducing his stress and anxiety some commonly used behavioral techniques for reducing tension fear anxiety and distress in clinical settings are relaxation training biofeedback desensitization etc these techniques are also helpful in controlling physical pain in somatic disorders having no physical root cause now let us see family therapy approach clients often develop a need of belongingness love and affection especially from their family members however such needs remain unsatisfied and generate hopelessness frustration and guilt in the client so family members of the such clients develop a feeling of anguish and fear related to the death of the client they may detach completely from the client this affects their relationship in a severe sense family therapy intends to reduce the communication gap between family members by resolving hidden issues among themselves this helps resolving dysfunctional roles in the family and improving harmony among them so family therapy also helps in providing a closer to the unfulfilled desires wishes and emotional needs of both family members and the client it is often employed with several other therapies as an adjunct to provide a smooth road to recovery to the client now we are going to see the problem focused counseling problem focused counseling gets its principle from psychoeducational and cognitive behavioral interventions it mainly concentrates on problem solving skills and strategies that are required for living a normal life the entire focus is laid on the current problems and anticipated techniques to solve them in an effective manner counselor promotes minimum adaptable changes in the client to solve the challenges or problems for this purpose some insight is developed to look the same problem with different point of views or lenses it also helps in managing cognitive distortions or any dysfunctional thoughts that may arise due to illness another technique is supportive expressive counseling this approach helps in providing a supportive environment in which clients may express their negative as well as positive emotions and may learn to deal with their anxiety for uncontrollable events this enables a person to tolerate various consistent and intrusive thoughts about illness and death when the person is diagnosed with hiv aids the person may get lots of cognitive distortions automatic negative thoughts in form of that why i should leave i have ruined my life so such type of thoughts may affect the person so let us see some of the common situations to provide counseling are client initiated counseling as the name suggest client initiates and seeks the intervention for reducing emotional conflict and distress this may be done under a stigmatized and distressed state so the counselor must take it as a distress call and the counseling must be initiated on an immediate basis to provide transient solution to the problem at hand another setting is provider initiated counseling in such type of counseling the client is referred by physician or any organization that he may be linked with 
Recommendation by the HIV AIDS testing is also made in the case of antenatal care. Antenatal means when the mother gets pregnant. There could be various prejudices and stigma attached to HIV AIDS testing. Thus, counseling for reducing these prejudices must be the first priority of the counselor. There are two main techniques, two main types of counseling used in HIV AIDS. One is pre-test counseling, another one is post-test counseling. In pre-test counseling, the counseling is conducted before taking the blood sample of the patient. Whereas in post-test counseling, the counseling is done before sharing the report with the patient. So let us see what we do in pre-test counseling. There are so many misconceptions and stigma attached to HIV AIDS testing. Due to this, clients are often in a dilemma about HIV testing. In pre-test counseling, counselor provides precise and up-to-date information about the transmission and prevention of this disease and other sexually transmitted infections called STIs so that client can make a sound decision about the testing procedure. Information about the window period is given to the client which is about 12 weeks between the testing period and last HIV exposure. It means if the client is gone for the testing just immediately after the high risk contact, so there the report may be negative. So that's why the window period is explained. If the report is negative, the testing may be done again after 12 weeks. So during this stage, establishing a good repo is essential for assessing whether how many post-test sessions are required to guide client to make a sound judgment about the testing. It also includes early identification of clients at high risk such as injectable drug users, IDUs. Let us see the post-test counseling. This phase of counseling involves handing over the results of HIV testing. The role of counselor is to provide importance during this phase as he can redirect the client and remind about the coping strategies required for settling down with the required information. Because what happens sometimes when seeing the report, the client may go into denial or trauma in a shock. So this is the job of the counselor to share the information in a proper manner. The process must be simple and should be carried out in person so that confidentiality can be maintained. If test results are positive, then the client must be provided with a thorough knowledge, the transmission, safe sex practices, psychosocial impacts of the disorder and future implications associated to it. Overloading with the information must not be done as it increases distress and anxiety levels in clients. So, only required information, the amount of information should be decided by the counselor, how much information should be given at this stage. On the other hand, if the results are negative, then clients must be provided education about risk reduction strategies. There must be provision in the counseling to reinforce the client about managing his or her better and healthy lifestyle to prevent any STIs, sexually transmitted infections in future. So here the role of counselor is very important to teach the client healthy sexual habits like the sex should be done with one partner only, no sex should be done with the strangers, sex should be always done with using condoms and all protective measures. Another type of counseling is crisis intervention. It includes assessment of the problem to provide an immediate solution. This is a short term intervention planned to resolve emotional, physical or psychological problems in client. 
It also includes helping the client to develop help-seeking behavior during their crisis. Counselor encourages clients to get support from his or her closed ones so that the crisis can be easily resolved. Counselor also tries to help the clients to develop better coping strategies for current and future problems. Another technique is called grief counseling. Grief or bereavement is a human response to a permanent loss of someone near and dear. Main goal of this counseling is assessing a person, accepting the death and minimizing the feeling of insecurity and loneliness. Grief counseling includes few steps like assessing the perception of death, providing emotional support and bringing the client back to the normal life. Different types of manifestation of grief experienced depending upon the age, sex, amount of closeness of the relationship with the person and economic dependence on the person who died. Losing the interest in normal daily activities, loss of concentration, depression, denial of loss are few examples of manifestations. Let us see the adherence counseling. HIV is no longer a fatal incurable disease. It has become manageable illness with the advent of ART. ART effectively suppresses replication of virus it, if taken at the right time. This reduced chances of getting opportunistic inf infections. Medication thus enhances both quality of life and longevity. However, any irregularity in following the prescribed regimen can lead to resistance to HIV drugs and therefore can weaken or reverse its effect. Let us see the special scenario in HIV AIDS counseling. Counseling of children with HIV AIDS. Counseling helps children in deciding their future goals and implications or impacts of the disease, addressing stigma attached, transmission of HIV AIDS, course of treatment, etc. This reduces anxiety among them and develops a feeling of perceived support. Children must be approached by the counselor on the basis of their age and understanding about the disease. It provides an opportunity to the counselor for assessing their needs, knowledge and understanding of HIV and helps in formulating better intervention plan. Discussions on the basis of available support systems like family therapy, play therapy, behavior therapy targets their stigma attached to the disease and reduce the overall impact of social stigma, discrimination and resentment because of being neglected. Not only children and adolescents are given counseling, their parents are also indulged in the session so that any conflict can be resolved. Counseling of pregnant women. To motivate the pregnant women for HIV testing, especially in their antenatal phases, is the main task for the counselor working with women. During initial stages of counseling, the counselor tries to assess needs, knowledge levels and information gaps of the client. HIV seropositive pregnant women undergoing entry retroviral therapy ART, must be given information about its impact on the growing fetus and transmission of the disease to the fetus. Counselors try to impart some knowledge about ART that may help in reducing any complications. It also helps in terminating unwanted pregnancies. Let us see the couple therapy. HIV testing can, will, can lead to various misunderstandings between partners. These can lead to violent behaviors against each other which often results in physical abuse, common in sexual violence and homicidal behaviors among such patients. The main goal of counseling is to reduce such risks and help in establishing healthy and respectful relationship among partners. Premarital counseling can also be used to remove any dilemmas attached to the prevalent notions about HIV AIDS.
let us see the barriers any counseling any therapy are having some barriers so some common barriers associated with hiv counselings are hiv infected clients are more prone to secondary infections due to an overall reduction of the immunity to slow down the decline of immunity they are put on medications which again act as a constant reminder about their infections also the side effects of such medicines may cause problems in their daily life functioning and thus may affect their mental as well as physical well-being they generally develop anxiety issues depression and frustration some people also develop guilt while cursing their sexual acts with multiple partners orientation like being gay or lesbian injecting drugs or feeling about being punished due to their lifetime choices these reactions may be associated with the mortality due to hiv aids losing hope for available treatments isolation or abandonment fear of social rejection and lifestyle modification as per A art all these factors may lead to early dropouts or non adherence to the counseling and medical treatment hiv aids counseling in community setting national aids control program nacp in india over the last two decades have focused on different aspects of the hiv epidemic in its effort to contain the spread of the disease and to provide treatment care and support to those infected several programs have been launched by the government of india to support the psychosocial well-being of hiv aids patients among which one of them is the saksham program project Saksham is the national identity of the GFATM Round Seven project in India. It is an abbreviation for Global Fund to Fight AIDS, TB, and Malaria Round Seven. The Saksham project is characterized by a unique partnership between 38 academic institutions that are working in close coordination with the public health system, NACO, and SACS. it is committed to responding to the needs of the national program with the re- regards to the hiv aids counseling training through enhancement of the quality of the trainer enhancement of the quality of training infrastructure and training system and support the supervision of training institutions and counselors so to summarize hiv aids is a debilitating disease which is associated with many opportunistic infections responsible for adverse physical and psychological impacts as the community associated hiv with such disapproved behaviors the individuals with hiv aids are labeled as immoral by the society and lose their social status we have talked about the common factors responsible for the contraction of hiv aids are unprotected sex multiple sex partners injectable drug use and infection during pregnancy or during breastfeeding to the child common psychological problems like depression anxiety etc seen in hiv aids patients and we have discussed about the goals of hiv aids counseling are to enhance psychosocial functioning of patients to increase the efficiency of pharmacotherapy and to reduce the dropout rates to reduce the impact of social stigma and marginalization reduction in chances of further transmission of the infection in post test counseling some common approaches to counseling in hiv aids are pre test counseling and post test counseling so thank you for patience listening today we had disc- discussion about the hiv aids counseling thank you